So in today's environment, it's really important to look at whatever business you're in, whatever investments you're in, and apply some basic stress test conditions to essentially prepare yourself for what may happen when the interest rates rise. And if you have a great long-term mortgage at a fixed interest rate, that's wonderful. But if you're invested in the projects where there's variable cost of uh, capital, uh, this is going to be a substantial stress applier. Most investors don't need to panic, just need to take a very systematic approach. Can they look at the portfolio and look at the points of concern? Where do you have big dollars invested? How those investments will fare or can fare? And just dissect a little bit in, in, into that to, to make sure that you're prepared to deal with potential stress. But when you borrow with a variable interest like a line of credit, you expose yourself to substantial risk. And one of the major risks with these portfolio acquisitions, one is a impact on cash flow. And that's what we are looking at. So that's a major risk. Good day, everyone. This is Dr. David Phelps of the Freedom Founders Mastermind Community and the Dentist Freedom Blueprint Podcast. Today, we're going to have a really a great discussion with a good friend of mine, Mr. Mike Zlotnick. Mike, how are you doing, sir? Hey, David. I'm doing well. How are you? Mike, I'm well. So Mike is the CEO and founder of the Tempo Management Group, which is a company that uh, does myriad of investments in funds in various aspects of real estate. And we'll talk to him about that because that's where his forte is. Uh, Mike comes from a background of being very analytical. That's what I love about him. We're in a number of other groups together, uh, real estate groups. And Mike is probably the guy that everybody goes to to say, hey, could you could you analyze the numbers on this particular uh, investment opportunity? And, and Mike's the guy who, who runs numbers like, like nobody's business. Uh, so we're really, really honored to have you on here today, Mike. And what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how you're looking at the market uh, in terms of what we what I kind of call stress testing. Uh, you know, when we go through times of economic uh, disruptions and volatility, certainly we have that right now in the market. Uh, as an investor, uh, wherever I might be investing, I could be investing in the stock market. I personally don't, but but I know a lot of people certainly have money in the stock market. Uh, we talk a lot about alternative investments. That's where where, where our, our, our ball game is. Uh, but again, we have to say, well, what's going on in the market? Well, we have. We have in, inflation, which is at you know forty-year record highs, and so the, the Federal Reserve is coming hard and, and saying that they're going to commit to raising interest rates. They already have started that uh, raising interest rates the rest of this year to combat inflation. Well, what does that do? Well, that increases the cost of, of money, which means that profit margins across the board for really all companies uh, starts to decrease. Profit margins de decrease. Uh, stock values come down. Um, people can't uh, afford houses uh, to the extent they could uh, even a few months ago. So, so we see a demand decreasing. Uh, we see mortgage applications decreasing right now. In fact, a number of mortgage, mortgage companies right now this week are laying off employees. I'll stop there and take a breath and let you pick it up from there. What do you, what do you see out there with your crystal ball? Thank you, David. And yeah, my crystal ball was wonderful, uh, but it broke and I can't find the local <laughs> sale. Yeah. Darn it. I hate, I hate that when that happens, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, we kind of went through this exercise uh, a couple of years back when COVID started. And I even remember going to the Freedom Founders Trusted Advisor Mastermind in January. We were doing stress test discussions then. So now it's another iteration. It's just um, this recession never really hit. And the severe recession never really hit. We, we, we had a blimp during the first few months of COVID and then things started rolling really well because of a very uh, loose monetary policy, uh, major fiscal policy by, by the US governments uh, with the COVID spending bills were into trillions and trillions of dollars. So we avoided a possible recession. Now we're coming back. I call it the party is over from the point of view that the government is not going to spend uh, trillions of dollars on COVID uh, related expenses. Whatever political side you take, this point that's over. Uh, and the Fed, like you said, they are absolutely required, mandated by their charter to raise interest rates because they, they have dual mandate. Uh, full employment, which we are already in full employment, we're essentially above full employment. And then uh, they have to uh, maintain stable inflation. We are way above that. So uh, not to reiterate what you said, uh, but we, we, we're gonna see interest rate going up and that's, uh, that's a stressed uh, driver, a very substantial stress driver. So in today's environment, it's really important uh, to look at whatever business you're in, whatever investments you're in, and apply some basic stress test conditions to um, essentially prepare yourself for what may happen when the interest rates rise. 
And if you have a great long-term mortgage at a fixed interest rate, that's wonderful. But if you're invested into projects where there's variable uh, cost of uh, capital, uh, this is going to be a substantial stressed, uh, stress applier. It's a variable. And one thing, just to go back to what happened in uh, uh, right after COVID, uh, a bunch of cash flow froze up. Basically, distributions froze on many deals. The reason it happened is because people weren't, weren't paying rent or people were asking for rent deferral. For some amount of time, we saw a very substantial stress from a cash flow perspective. Now we're gonna see some level of a similar stress, but it's not gonna be a short lift. It's gonna be ongoing stress because the interest rates uh, that go up, they generate higher debt service and that's gonna uh, stay uh, for a substantial amount of time. So that, that's kind of what I'm looking at. And as a fund manager, um, the most basic exercise we do is we look at the portfolio and we will talk about that, but most investors don't need to panic, just need to, Take a very systematic approach. Can they look at the portfolio and look at the uh, points of concern? Where do you have big dollars invested? How those investments uh, will fare or can fare? And, and just dissect a little bit in, in, into that to, to make sure that, that uh, you're prepared. You're prepared to deal with potential stress. Let me, let, me, let me throw out just an example that I know you'll have some insights on. There is um, there was a, a large... Uh, portfolio large meaning like i think the number was 87 87 single family houses a portfolio that was purchased somewhere in florida sorry i can't tell you exactly where you may know of this but this is recent uh this was a uh, fundrise which is kind of a crowdfunding source for small investors who aren't accredited and they want to you know play ball in the real estate market so these crowdfunding sources like fundrise uh, can, can raise capital in small amounts, you know, a thousand, five thousand dollars. And so they, they go out and people that are anxious to get in real estate, well, they can do it that way. What Fundrise did is they, 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 they used a credit facility like, um, like a Wells Fargo, I'm not sure, or, or actually it was, I think it was actually Goldman Sachs in this case, was their credit facility uh, for the debt, underlying debt. Uh, and they raised a certain amount of capital for this portfolio um, on the debt side. And then they go to the equity markets and from small investors, they raised another, I think, another 45% of the total acquisition. Well, here's here's the key. Now, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I but I remember looking at it. This 87 house portfolio, the average bid price or acquisition price of this portfolio, these houses, they they were they bid them up beyond the market norms about 45%. Mike, 45%. This cheap money, well, cheap at the moment money uh, allow them to do that they're overbidding for these houses and and raising well take, taking houses off the market for owner occupants uh and then and now the comparable sale price you know goes up um the danger uh in this case i would say would be well they have used cheap money to buy these houses so if you've got cheap money you can do almost anything right for to a point uh but most of that money i think from a credit facility is variable rate if i'm if i'm not mistaken you would know more than i do if it's variable rate then what's going to happen? These equity investors on top of that that capital stack, um, if, if things go south a little bit, uh, where, where's their margin? If you if you if you already take a market retail price that we think is maybe maybe high, relatively high, uh, in in hist historical perspective, and you bid it up forty five percent more because well you got cheap money, is that necessarily a smart investment? I'm just going to stand back on that because again it's Goldman Sachs, but they're playing in the in the capital stack down here. These equity investors playing up here where where, where where do they stand i don't know yeah that's a great example of um momentum buy in the hot market paying top price uh leveraging with uh variable rate debt which is uh highly risky and speculative normally you want to borrow long you you've, you've thought this uh borrow 30-year mortgage buy 15-year mortgage B borrow long cheap money during inflation that's wonderful for you as a borrower but when you borrow with very vari variable interest, like a line of credit, you expose yourself to substantial uh, risk. And one of the major risks with these portfolio acquisitions, uh, one is a uh, impact on cash flow. You can actually go from potentially positive cash flow into negative cash flow rather quickly. So the simple exercise, you could borrow with the interest rates being four percent, and with rates going up uh, and the market adjusting, suddenly the rate goes up to six percent. And your payment factor is up 50 percent 
on in these leverage investments, you can go from positive cash flow of say 8% cash on cash into negative uh, cash flow situation with negative 8% cash on cash rather quickly when the rate jumps uh, like that. And that's what we are looking at. So that's a major risk. Another major risk is actually valuation risk. Like you said, if they over overbid and overpay, uh, Florida, especially South, uh, Southern Florida, uh, Southern California, Phoenix, Las Vegas, they're known as yo-yo markets. And when the market's correct, those are the markets that take it on the chin. So I don't know where this portfolio is, but it's very possible that um, uh, they, they overpay. And the retail investors who participated in the fundraise may wind up losing all their money. In essence, it's it, it's it, it's a very highly leveraged, speculative, not well downside protected uh, type of a deal. I'll give you one um, hint: what uh, institutional investors do. We've done this on a number of uh, larger deals where you need bridge financing because you're executing a value strategy. If they bought this portfolio fully performing, no new built houses, there is no value. And what is the value? But if you're buying a distressed or discounted asset and you're executing value at an increasing rents, the reason you go for, for variable debt is because you want to refinance after a couple of years. You don't want prepayment penalty. So one of the insurance policies against that is buying a rate cap. And I don't know whether the line of credit has a rate cap. Hopefully it does. But if it doesn't have a rate cap, it's a big problem. If it does have a rate cap, at least you know what's the ceiling What's the worst case scenario? And that's, by the way, one of the stress tests. If you have variable rate uh, mortgages, find out what is the cap. So that's the worst case scenario. And that can you survive that point? And if you can, at least you, you, you can go on and live another day. So, so as a rate cap, as you've defined it, is that available to, who's that available to? Is that available to, to one-off investors? Or is that, is that available if someone's going out to finance an owner-occupied home today? Uh, is that available in general? As you said, it's like insurance. You're going to pay a, a premium for that, but it's kind of a premium for a, um, I'm not going to say a known loss. It's, it's for, for a known risk protection. So you know what the bottom is. So if, if I have to pay a, a premium for a rate cap to hold my rate um, from going above a certain amount, well, at least I know what that is. I've, I've already factored that in versus an unknown. But but is that available for across the board or is that in certain, certain lenders? What, what's that look like, Mike? That's a great question. It depends on the type of product. So if it's an institutional loan, we just did a deal, large um, multifamily deal in Indianapolis. We went into the deal with a variable rate um, around 4% and the rate cap was six. It was basically an insurance policy. You pay um, a certain amount of basis points of the total amount of loan, and then you have a cap of 6%. So it is tied to an index. It'll go up at 6%. The insurance Company starts paying whatever interest rate spread. Okay. So uh, that is available on uh, large uh, multifamily type of assets. On residential front, typically you see it in the form of um, uh, adjustable rate mortgages. Our mortgages have typically a cap. Uh, it is it is part of the disclosed. It's required disclosure, uh, and um, it, it, it typically, off the top of my head. The cap on residentials could be as high as um, three to four percent higher than what the current rate is, but there is a cap. Most of the arms have some kind of a cap. It, it, it's a substantially higher cap than what you're paying today, but it exists most of the times. With lines of credit, it's a conversation with the bank. Basically, the discussion is if you are borrowing from a line of credit today, uh, what is what is the cap? And the challenge with line of credit uh, cap is that. At some point, if you hit the cap, the bank just calls the line. <laughs> it's another problem because line of credit is, is, is a revolving line every year. They can just say, hey, <laughs> we well, don't want to re re renew yeah. this. Have a nice day. Yeah, exactly. Find the cash. Yeah, you have 90 days. Exactly. If you enjoyed watching or learning from this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. If you have a question about any of my content or this specific video, just please leave a comment down below. And as always, Stay focused on your freedom. I'll see you next time.